yet another Friday and I've come your way once again with another edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Over millions of people, including you, make use of the internet almost every day. But did you know that while surfing the net, you are also exposed to some threats? Well, today on Best Tech, we sit with an IT solutions manager here at Ghana Web, Alexander Ajiman, who is going to educate us on safe browsing. Do enjoy. At the start of January 2022, some 16.99 million internet users were captured in a research by datareportal.com, with internet penetration standing around 53% of the total population, it has become rather imperative for internet users to bear in mind their safety and their security while surfing the internet. On this week's edition of BizTech, I'll be speaking with an IT solutions manager on this development. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back from that break. My guest on this week's edition of Best Tech is Alexander Ajeman, and he's the IT Solutions Manager for Ghana Web. Alex, welcome to Best Tech. How are you? Thank you, Mali. I'm doing great. Many thanks. Great. Many thanks for your time. Yes, I just wanted to find out from you how important is safe browsing to our personal security on the internet? First of all, let me define safe browsing. Safe browsing is you having a layer of protection on the internet via the requisites and things you do um, so that anyone on social media or anyone accessing the internet won't have your bio data or confidential data. Okay. So in a nutshell, yeah. it's what you do to protect yourself and on personally and then on, on social media. Okay. Okay, Alex, you've thank you, thank you for that explanation. Where does a current trend of internet lie in a in a much diverse world? Um I think Ghana is doing well now. We have um fifty three percent internet penetration is, is a lot. It's mm. it's like every one in two people have internet access so um when you watch the COVID time there were a lot of people working from home which shows and ghana is, is is now there yes we, we are getting there and then you have a lot of people also having remote jobs now they don't need to move from their homes they just sit at home and, and, and work and this has also given a lot of revenue to service providers who are also in return and um, bring a lot of technology on board to give us stable internet. So I think, yeah, Ghana, Ghana is doing well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Alex, I want to find out, so how secure, I know you have to, when you're on the internet, you have to be safe on there, but from your point of view as an IT expert as well, how secure are the systems and data for internet services? Uh, I always tell people um, there's no secure environment, there's no secure social media. Everyone is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Let's take, for example, Gmail. If you want to create a new Gmail, you're supposed to give in your bio data, your, that's your name, your age, where you live, your parents, and blah, blah. So meaning you'd have to give something in order to re receive something. And every social media platform has back-end people. There are people who have access to your, to your data. So um, there's none that is, you, you just have to make sure you don't put too much confidential data out there, as much as we think social media platforms or some social media platforms are safe. Okay. So I want to come down to some of the safety measures, you know, especially using the internet and all of that. What, what do you think, can you, from your point of view, can you share some of those with us? Okay, let me share a few. Uh, let's say you are browsing a website. Sometimes you can look for the secured website, which usually has or ends with S, that's HTTPS. Mm -hmm. You can also avoid uh, clicking on suspicious links. If someone sends you a link and you're not too sure, uh, you might avoid it. You can use VPN, you can use incognito mode. These are just a few things. And you can keep your PCs also updated to the latest, with the latest and licensed antivirus. And these are a few things you can do too. Yeah, so before, before we go on a break, I just want to find out just briefly from you. I know we experienced the COVID pandemic and all of that. 
um, from just your own personal experience, how is the internet usage for you? Are you using more internet at home, remotely, or from the office? Uh, I think I was using more at home. Mm. Yes, at home you, you use a lot because mm. um, it, it's, you are basically virtual. Mm. You don't meet people. Like I can just walk to the next office and, and ask you um, what's what's but then like what's happening or when is our next meeting but then when when you're home you'd have to do it virtually meaning you use more more data mm, okay yeah. all right thank you very much alex i'll take a quick break and so i've been speaking with alexander ajiman and he's the it solutions manager for ghana web and we're talking about how to browse safely on the internet bearing in mind your security and your personal data i'll take a quick break we'll be right back don't go anywhere Welcome back from that break on Best Tech. I've been speaking with Alexander Ajeman and he's an IT solutions manager for Ghana Web. And we've been talking about the internet and how to use the internet safely. Alex, I'm enjoying a very interesting conversation with you and also learning from you as well. Now I want to come down to the technicalities a bit. What, what are some of the key tools that one can use when they are surfing on the internet? Um, one can use VPN. I think VPN is common. Mm. Yes, it's a private tunnel that you can use to prevent even your service provider from knowing which um, websites you are going to and fro. You can also use Eraser. There's, mm. Usually when you delete files, there are people who can still undelete them. So mm. when you use an Eraser, it's like a file shredder. It, it can, I mean, shred your files so no one has a trace of it. And then there's a browser also called a Tor browser. It has okay. a lot of features. It has even an inbuilt VPN in there. So yeah. Okay. These are, so I want to come down to storage as well. I know of the Google Drive and some others as well, WeTransfer and all of that. Do you think these ones are also safer options that people can use? Yes. And what, what are some others as well? Yes, yes. Um, they, they are very safe, especially Google Drive. Mm. It's very safe. I would, I would also recommend um, Dropbox. Okay. Yes. Um, I think you can even collaborate on Dropbox apart from file sharing and file hosting. Yes. So, okay. Yeah, they are, they are safe. WeTransfer. Google Drive and then Dropbox. Okay. Yeah, Google Drive. Yeah. I'd always recommend. Okay. All right. So now I want to come down to obviously people. You you can't be on the internet without some level of um, security breach. You know that's what we call the malwares and the viruses as well. Just take us briefly through what my, um, these malwares are and also the viruses and what role they play in our in our internet world. Okay. So the the malwares like we have ransomware. Mm. And then we have um, fleeceware, and um, these are they are like program codes mm. that serves an essence to hackers. Like they find their way to your devices, and then um, since they are they are code to do a particular job, even silently in the background they do, they do them. Uh, an example is the ransomware, mm. um, which affects uh, Microsoft OS a lot. But what they do is the hackers um, they encode your data and files and then they ask for a ransom they ask for money and so it can affect uh, affect a whole or an entire organization so it's like an extortion yes extortion okay. they extort money and then like the fleas where um it hides on maybe your mobile devices and it creates subscription so you if if you don't track your debit cards well you you find every every month you, you have um, subscription fees which mm. which are recurring uh, okay. so and usually they affect people who don't usually don't even know how to cancel subscriptions mm. yeah. okay v very well explained now i want to come down to um how how we how do how are we going to keep these malwares I'm, I'm sure there are some antiviruses around yes yeah. yes um and antiviruses um, do a great job i would recommend ESET, which even has the anti-theft so you can always get get them uh, update them. You can run them on your mobile devices, laptops, on your servers. Uh, you, they'll take away the malware or even hint you when you're going to an unsafe website or a dangerous mm. website. Okay. Um, would you recommend the usage of pen drives, external drives, and all that? Because you know it has to go through a lot of processes and all of that. But people's data and is 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 on are on these devices. What, what what do you make of pen drives and? these other external storage devices, aside the Google Drives and the rest. If, if you are going to use 
anyone's if you're sharing pen drives then obviously you have to scan it for yeah. any malware or uh, any intrusion yeah. any virus yeah, i think they are not bad they are yeah. they are very simple devices that helps you can carry out around when you're traveling or in, in a small office environment so okay. yeah all right yeah. Yeah, so finally we're wrapping up so i just want to get your take on ghana's internet penetration i mean according to the data from data reporter we are reaching almost 17 million that's at the start of january where do you just from your point of view where do you see ghana's internet penetration in the years to come a projection in the years to come we could, we could let's say even 2025 we even hit uh, 56 percent mm. because if you watch from 2021 to 2022 was an increment of 2.1 um, percent okay. meaning as there's, there's there's some growth yeah there. there's some growth yeah mm -hmm. there's some growth and people are getting to use um people people even in the, in the remote areas not only the urban areas people are using the internet more mm -hmm. when you watch the apiati incident recently mm -hmm. it's it's a remote it's a village but then people had camera phones people were yeah, videoing video. yeah the only thing is they didn't run from the fire but mm. you, you you can from an it perspective you can understand the penetration is is gone fast so i think yeah ghana 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 is doing well and ghana will will have more penetration rates by let's say 2025. Okay. alex give us just give us your final words for people who are, are on the internet on a daily basis what's the one key thing they should look out in terms of their safety and their security in terms of safety um i would say don't put too much uh, confidential data there. I think that's that's basically it. Mm -hmm. Your debit cards, your credit cards. I mean, you should try as much as possible not to put those things there. You should update your computers regularly. regularly. You should make sure you don't click on suspicious links. Just the normal, you know, mm -hmm. um, do's and don'ts. And then just be very particular about websites you go. If, if you find find a website um, not too secure, you, you can check it out mm. and yeah, just make sure you're safe. All right, yeah. Alex Ajima, thank you so much. You. There you have it. I've been speaking with Alex Ajima, and he's the IT Solutions Manager for Ghana Web, and he's been my guest on this week's edition of BizTech. Many thanks for watching. My name is Maoli Aholumega. for that report. Up next is this headline. To our very first story, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has hinted of plans by his ministry to start the collection of property taxes in Ghana. According to the minister, Ghana's economy is moving to become one that is able to double its revenue to GDP ratio by the imposition of various tax measures, including the e-levy and property taxes. Speaking at a press briefing on Thursday, May 12th, the minister said, I think it is an exciting period to have a structural solution to revenue mob mobilization in a way that we haven't had before. And we are also starting with the property taxes as a pilot to begin then we become a nation in which we can easily double our revenue to gdp ratio from the 13 percent to double that but nobody likes to pay taxes so it's always difficult but i think we will all get used to it and also apply the taxes for the citizenry to see a lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School, Dr. Alexander Amankwa, has described a proposal by the Electricity Company of Ghana to get a 148% on electricity tariffs from August 2022 as unrealistic. According to him, the power distribution company has been inefficient and provided unsatisfactory services to customers over the years. Therefore, cannot make a demand for an upward adjustment. ECG is asking for a 148% increment in tariff. Do you think this is realistic or not? This is highly unrealistic, as I said in the discussion forum. You cannot ask for 148%. That is something that is not real. It's, it's not possible. And I believe very well that 
PURC will look at it critically and review downwards. They should improve upon service delivery. In fact, if there's quality service delivery, people will want to pay more. And I, 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 I liken it to a wife cooking for the husband. Of course, if your, your soup is watery, your soup is bad, what is the justification for asking for an increment in the chop money? What are you going to produce? In future, you still produce watery, uh, what do you call it, soup. Soup that does not taste well, and your husband will not be uh, happy. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Anderson, has noted that the country's current inflation comes as a surprise to his team as food, transport and imports have pushed the country's inflation to 23.6%. The governor noted that the monetary policy is in a, in a huge fix even as it begins meetings on May 18 to make decisions on the nearly 24% inflation rate as well as the monetary policy rate of 17%. Speaking to Bloomberg, Dr. Ernest Addison noted that even though issues are complicated currently, a major decision will be taken. Vice President of Imani Africa, Kofi Bento, has reaffirmed his stance against the revision and resubmission of the controversial Ijapa royalties deal. According to him, he believes the transaction in its current form can be compared to an act of robbery, adding that it is the perfect plan for anyone to rob Ghanaians of their national heritage. In an interview with Accra-based TV3 and monitored by Ghana Web, Kofi Bento maintained that the current Ijapa royalties deal will not in any way benefit the citizens as the nation was not going to get value for money. Growing concerns about the unavailability of fertilizer for agriculture production have contributed to the surge in the prices of food in Ghana and the continent. The poultry industry has also bemoaned the unavailability of feed and raw materials. President Nanado Dankwe Kufuado has stated that these concerns could heighten as fertilizer shortages are being experienced across Africa. According to the president, the country's maize and soil production could also be affected, noting that our poultry industry could suffer greater shocks. The president made this statement at the opening of the 22nd Academy of African Business and Development Conference at the University of Professional Studies in Accra on Wednesday, May 18. <laughs>